Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Wallace. In this video, we are looking at Engineering Science N3 and we are looking at the topic Hydraulics. Uh, if you have not seen the introductory video on uh, Hydraulics, please check it out. I'll put a, a link in the description below. Uh, but it is important to know that we have done an introduction. So in this video, we'll just jump into a few things and look at one question. I'll try to keep this video as short as I can, but also uh, be as uh, informative as it can be. So in this video, we'll be looking at work done. We'll also look at power by hydraulics. All right, so uh, hydraulics, are, like we have already mentioned, this is just liquids, liquids in motion, and also liquids transmitting energy. Okay, so uh, liquids in motion and also liquids transmitting energy, that is basically what hydraulics is. Uh, the complexities of hydraulics also depends on what level of our study we are looking at. So the deeper that we go into studying hydraulics, then the more complex our discussions will be. So uh, in this video, what I'm just basically looking at is uh, work done by hydraulics. And now if we speak of motion, this is just movement, which means when liquids move, they have been displaced, there is motion. And also, when we speak about energy, energy, this is uh, work done or ability to do work, but then we'll be uh, discussing it as, as work done. So, uh, hydraulics can transmit energy or can, tra can, can do work, which is just basically uh, work done, and we'll be discussing that in much detail. All right, so when we speak about uh, liquids, doing work or work done, what we defined or in our earlier discussions, I'm sure you have done this, in our earlier discussions we said work done is just a product of the force and the displacement. Work done is the force, is a product of the force and the displacement. Displacement basically being a uh, a liquid moving from one point to the other then it has been displaced which is just basically motion so whenever a liquid moves from one point to the other then there is displacement and therefore work has been done if we move an object from point a we move it all the way to point b then this object has been displaced from this point to that point then work has been done so basically in the same manner when we speak about hydraulics doing work we are speaking about the liquid moving from one point to the other and in the process we are transferring energy or we are doing work. So in the same manner it will just be force times displacement. Uh, in my displacement work done is the force times the displacement. I'll use S for displacement. Uh, make sure your displacement is always in meters and your force is always in newtons. How much force that was used to displace that liquid the force times the displacement. So, for example, if we have a liquid in a container, we have, uh, let's say, three liters of water. And remember what we said, one liter of water is one kg. So basically, this is three kgs of, of our liquid. If I move this liquid from this point, I lift it up to a certain height, from that point, maybe it goes five meters up. I have moved this liquid up to a five meters height, then work has been done, you have displaced. Our displacement is gonna be five meters, which is our displacement. Our force that was used, now in this case, our force is not gonna be three kg, but our force, remember the force in this case, since we are lifting, our force is going to be the mass times acceleration due to gravity. We have applied a force of that much, in this case, which will be three times 9,8 because acceleration due to gravity is 9,8. So in terms of the force, always get, not the mass, but always get the force in neutrons. We multiply the mass of that liquid times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, not all liquids are like water. You will have to figure out the exact mass but then after you figure out your exact mass you will have to calculate or multiply by 9,8. What I mean is this, if our liquid was 
something other than water, then we are not going to apply one liter is equal to one, one kg. If our liquid was other than water, what we will say is we need to figure out what is the mass of that uh, liquid. So our mass will always be hiding in the density of that liquid. Remember what we said in our earlier vi video is that density is the mass per unit volume. So inside the density, we already have the mass hiding in there. So if we cross multiply, our mass is equals to the density represented by that symbol times the volume. It will give us our mass and our mass will always be in kg. And this mass, this mass is what we now use in figuring out our force. So if we multiply this by gravity 9,8, it will give us our weight or our force that we, that we need. With this in mind, which will bring us to our, our second formula that we'll be using for calculating work done. What we have said is that work done is equals to the force times the displacement. Now, for our force, what we need is the mass times gravity. So this uh, displacement, so now if we say our mass is the density times velocity, then times gravity, then multiplied by our uh, displacement now if we are lifting the object if we're lifting the object this displacement is going to be a height what we'll end up is uh, we'll find that density times gravity times height just this density times gravity times height this is what our formula for pressure at a depth is and then if we multiply by our volume this is just pressure so our work done will be reduced to work done is equals to pressure times volume okay pressure times volume now in this case it is not all of these deductions are not necessary for you to memorize because in most cases they'll give us this formula they'll give us that formula so this formula will be given force times displacement but if you are dealing with pressure you'll be look you'll be using the pressure times the volume pressure times the volume okay so those will be our two formulas formula for calculating work done we'll be using work done is equals to force times displacement if you have the force if you have the mass you multiply by 9,8 then the other formula that you will use is the pressure this is pressure p not density times your volume pressure in pascal volume in cubic meters okay now let me just weigh in a bit on volume you will need to know how to calculate for volume of different shapes volume of uh, uh, a cylindrical shape volume of a cylindrical shape uh, is equals to the area of the base times the height so you figure out the area of the base in this case the area of the base is a circle which will be pi r square then the height you multiply by your height if you are given a diameter if it is a cylindrical shape like that it will be pi d square over 4 then you multiply by the height so for area for volume of any shape you have to figure out the area of the base then you multiply by the height if you are looking at uh, volume of a cube shaped object maybe something like this you still need to figure out the volume of the base so in this case the base looks like a rectangular shape which will be l times b your length times the breadth then you multiply it by the height now again all of those calculations should give you an answer in cubic meters which means your radius should be in meters your height should be in meters when you calculate if you're looking at a cube or uh, a square shaped uh, object like that your length in meters your height in meters and as well as your your height in meters so everything should give us uh, our height or our volume in cubic meters then every uh, our calculations will be all right uh, as well also keep in mind units the unit for work done should be joules 
unit for work done should be joules. You'll be using the letter J. Uh, if you figure out all of those, then that will be very fine. So now, if we can figure out work done, if we can figure out work done, then it means we can also figure out what power is. Okay? Power is the rate at which work is done. Okay? Power is the rate at which work is done. So this still takes us back to the basics. Uh, or you can say power is work done per second or work done per unit time. So it just takes us back to the basics and power will be calculating as long as we know what our work done is. I'm, I'm writing the view D because for just to make it easier for us to memorize as work done over your time. So now with power, your time should always be in seconds. Always in, be in seconds. Your work done as, always, as usual. Uh, it will be in joules. So our time should always be in seconds. Every time we are figuring out power, let's uh, uh, convert our time to seconds. Uh, so which also takes us back to how to convert time from minutes to seconds, from hours to seconds. We should know how to convert our time from any, uh, uh, from any category of time, from any, whether it's minutes, hours or seconds, minutes or hours we should be able to convert it to to seconds all right however if we can figure out that then everything will be fine the units for power the unit for power is watts okay you'll be using the symbol w okay the unit for power is watts Okay, so here's the question. The question says a single hydraulic pump needs to pump all the water. So firstly, figure out what are you dealing with. We are dealing with water, makes it easy. Uh, what we know is one liter is equals to one kg. One cubic meter is equals to 1,000 liters, which is equals to 1,000 kgs. Okay, it makes it much easier. So uh, I'll read the question. A single hydraulic pump needs to pump all the water from a, a circular dam with a radius of 15 meters. So this dam, it's a circular dam. The radius is 15 meters. The depth of the water in the dam is 10 meters. So let's say from there, up to there is 10 meters this is how far the water is 10 meters the water must also be pumped through a height of 10 meters so once we pump this water it will go 10 meters up calculate the work done by the pump the second question says calculate the power required to empty the dam in three hours all right so that is what we have so uh, for our first question we need to figure out how much work done is needed work done is equal to the force times the displacement so this water in the dam this is the capacity from here we'll be able to get how much volume of the water there is now, in order for us to figure out how much volume of that water there is and how much work will be done, we'll take, we'll first calculate for the volume. Volume is equal to, in this case, it's uh, pi r square times the height. We have our radius, 15 meters. You square that times our 10 meters. This 10 meters is the height of the water, not the height to where we are pumping. The height to where we are pumping, this is our displacement, where we are displacing this whole water to where we are pumping to. This 10 meters that we are using here is just for the, the depth of the water. Okay, so do not forget to square and also make sure that uh, the radius and the depth of the water are all in meters so that we get uh, the, the answer that will give us 
in cubic meters. So from my calculations, I got 7068,583 cubic meters. Now, this gives us an idea of how much force is required to push because now we know that this is the volume of the water. One square, one cubic meter of water is equal to 1000. So therefore, if we need to know the mass of this amount of water, we'll just calculate uh, the mass, it will be the volume times 1000 because one of this is, so we'll say 7608.583 times 1000. 7068583. Now, this is kg. This is how much the water, this is the mass of the water in the dam. So, all of this water needs now to be pushed 10 meters high. Okay? So, from this point, we are now going to apply this formula. We are going to say work done is equal to the force times the displacement. Our displacement is 10 meters. The force, force is mass times gravity. Then we multiply by our displacement. So our mass is 7068583 times gravity 9,8. Then we multiply by our 10. This now 10 meters, the displacement that we are moving the water to. And then we'll get our answer to be 9, uh, six nine two seven two one one three four now this is how much work has been done joe's that's a seven there okay this is how much work has been done to move all this water from our dam and move it 10 meters up that is how much work has been done uh, for our next question it says uh, calculate the power now, we are calculating the power required to empty all of this and within three hours. So like we mentioned, power is just the rate at which work is done. So if we have our correct work done, which is this, we'll just divide by our time. So we'll take our, our work done in joules our time now our time when we look at our time what we have is three hours but remember what we said this time should be in seconds so three hours should be converted to seconds we multiply by 3600 because one hour is equals to 3600 seconds so now we are multiplying this by 3600 and our answer is uh, 64140,846 watts. Uh, that's a zero. Okay, if you want, you can say 64,141 kilowatts. Okay, depending on how the question is asking. But however, this question did not ask us to give our answer in kilowatts. So there you have it, guys. Uh, regarding power, as long as you know how to get your work done, then you'll be able to figure out uh, power. It's an easy topic. It's something, as long as you know the basics, you know you have the foundation, then everything will be smooth sailing.